friends, welcome to another production vlog with me, not Lauren, and uh, this person over here who occasionally like writes stuff, although I don't really know what, and Will. <laughs> <laughs> For this production vlog, uh, we're going to be changing up the format a little bit, a little bit, and uh, we're actually going to be keeping, hopefully keeping this format moving forward. We'll see um, how it goes, let us know if you like it. We're trying to make it a bit more, you know, casual. Conversational. And conversational. So one of the things we're going to start doing is uh, discussing uh, in this past update, uh, what went well, what was challenging, and what are the next steps for us. Um, so you can keep an update on our progress. So, well, what went well this week? So, uh, what's gone well so far? I think uh, you know the script, uh, you know, progress on on scripts have been going really well. We've got a lot of uh, feedback from uh, the residents here at the Transmedia Center where we work, and uh, yeah, they've really they, they've they've given a lot of great you know notes and suggestions, uh, but also really positive feedback. So I think that's been a pretty good mark for us. Yeah, and um, we are also. Uh, uh, spoke with our composer, mm -hmm. Kirsten Hippie, yep. plug channel down there, oh. um, which I we can't reveal exactly what she's doing because it's super secret. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> spoilers. It sounds really good, and we're really excited about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys will like it too. And we have a couple more writers coming on board, which will be super nice and mm -hmm. fun. Yes. <laughs> so, Sarah, what has been challenging for the past week and so? Um, well, I mean, that has actually changed every day of this week, but the most challenging thing recently is, uh, unfortunately, we found out uh, that uh, the actress who played uh, Joe March in our pilot mm -hmm. uh, will not be moving on forward with us for the series, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, sucks because yeah. she's great and fantastic, mm -hmm. but uh, it... Yeah. yeah, it happens. Uh, you know, it happens all the, the time. Process. Yeah, it's all part of the process. It's all part of the production world. But, you know, we had a really, really great time, you know, working with her. And, um, and yeah. wish her the best of luck in, in those awesome plays she's doing. Yeah, yeah. She's going to go on and have a really, really great, promising career. So, yeah. yeah. Which uh, kind of leads us into our last question, which is what's next? Uh, which is casting, not just uh, for Joe, but for a few other characters as well. So the second part of our new format is uh, where we're going to have a discussion about things. It could be like casting, like we were talking about. Or uh, just kind of anything. Today, something that has been on our minds a lot has been, because we've been dealing with legal stuff and, and entertainment lawyers and, and whatnot, is rights, so copyright and, and all those, and how that happen, applies into transmedia. We are going to set a time limit for these sections, um, and I believe we decided on two minutes. Mm -hmm, two minutes. And our lovely transmedia assistant is going to be timing. Oops. Okay. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> Ready, set, go. Um, so a big difference, I think, between like transmedia and um, videos, or just like straight up films and stuff, is all audience involvement, and especially in, in projects like ours, where there's like fans mm -hmm. interacting with the characters, and we have those stored in some places, um, and, and even in, in a big broader sense with some like really complicated transmedia projects, where there's a lot of fan contributions and I mean we've been mm -hmm. looking at monetization a lot and, and how that works and it's really a gray area I think. It's it's a gray area because they're you know not all the laws have really been set and solidified in, in, in the growing transmedia and social media landscape mm -hmm. um, so you, know, you bring up a really good point about you know fan contributions uh, because even though the content we may be pushing out uh, you know it may be clear in, in, in a legal state um, but you know what we receive back from the fans. Does that count as content that we're curating? Uh, right. Is that stuff that you know needs to be regulated? Um, and it's like, a really gray area. And I think once you start getting into monetization issues like that, you know, like mm -hmm. I know we want to put up some ads on our website just to get a bit of sense trickling in. <laughs> yeah. you know? uh, but we do have the store files there, and, and technically those have some fan tweets in there, and mm -hmm. you know we don't exactly have releases for that but would you get really like but that's part of the yeah. experience you know like mm -hmm. and yeah like do we you know it, 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 and it comes down to ownership too like do we yeah. own the you know the, those tweets that are directed at us in the yeah. show it's yeah it's, it's really tough and I to think, gauge yeah and i think that's part of why a transmedia property might be hard to package and sell other places like not just the fact that how mm -hmm. do you package a transmedia project outside of it yeah but yeah. also like if there's all this audience contribution to it and and collaborative building like right. how how do you do that you know and you know when, when you say packaging it's i think this is why a lot of web series are more inclined to package dvds mm -hmm. uh because they're they're you, you're really only practicing the video content that you produce yeah. not necessarily the um oh um, <laughs> let us know your thoughts on the subject yes <laughs> and and until next time <laughs> sign up <laughs>